attraction, the adhesion to the earth that permits us to start moving, to turn, and to stop. When we lose this traction, well, Reduced traction, a condition that often exists on roadways, that calls for special driving skills and an adjustment of normal driving habits. Each year in the United States, about three million accidents occur on wet roads. At least 35% of these three million accidents can be assumed to involve skidding as a primary or secondary cause. There are a number of different situations that can contribute to reduced traction. Situations where the needed gripping power of the tires exceeds the traction available on the road surface. This can result in increased stopping distance, loss of directional stability, and loss of operator control. The tires on your car have a great deal to do with the amount of traction you have. Which of these two cars do you think will stop in the shortest distance on dry pavement? Car number one that has radial tires with good tread? Or car number two that is equipped with well-worn tires? Demonstrations prove that a car with well-worn or smooth tires will stop in a shorter distance on dry pavement. Many people believe that the tread on tires is for traction on dry pavement. Not so. Actually, the tire tread's main job, besides reducing operating temperature to provide longer mileage, is providing traction on wet surfaces. If it were possible to drive only on completely dry pavement and you didn't care about tread mileage, slick tires would be great. But let's try the same stopping demonstration with the two cars on wet pavement. And you will readily see that slicks or worn treads just don't do the job on wet surfaces. A wet weather weekend and a road race will also prove the reduced traction of slicks on wet surfaces. Even top race drivers don't look forward to driving in wet weather. The reason for this is that the slicks float on the water, losing contact with the pavement. This loss of traction is known as aquaplaning, commonly called hydroplaning. When this occurs, you can actually lose control of your car when just cruising down a straight stretch of road. Dynamic hydroplaning is the result of water penetrating between tires and the pavement. This causes water pressure, which can raise a portion of the tire off the pavement. The pressure increases with increased vehicle speed until the tire can be completely supported by water and actually be floating. At this point, the driver loses nearly all control. Treaded tires are able to maintain traction between the tire and pavement by channeling the water through the tread grooves. In some locations, pavements have been grooved, somewhat similar to tires to provide greater traction under wet weather conditions. Regardless of the condition of the tires that are on your car, hitting the brakes on wet pavement can instantly turn your car into a giant water ski. And the more bald the tires are, the better they ski. In this demonstration at a test track, a vehicle traveling at 55 miles per hour will pass over a plate of glass covered with only 80 thousandths of an inch of water. A green dye in the water permits a high-speed camera mounted below to show you how this water pressure prevents a partially worn tire from making any contact with the road. Any time the water is deeper than the tread depth on your tires, hydroplaning can occur. Complete hydroplaning 
with a total loss of traction needed for steering and braking, can occur at speeds as low as 30 miles per hour. Actually, at even lower speeds, partial hydroplaning occurs and is a more common happening which can be every bit as dangerous as complete hydroplaning. When it first starts to rain, a gooey paste forms on the highway and causes a viscous type of hydroplaning. This happens when the first drops of water combine with the dirt, dust, oil and grease on the road surface and can be slicker than an ice skating rink. And even when heavy rains wash away much of the muck, don't forget that wet pavement is slicker than dry pavement, and wet rubber provides less traction than dry rubber. Viscous hydroplaning can occur without rain. A little dew from the damp night air is all that's needed to take away your traction. Think about this when you're out driving during the wee hours. To sum it all up, hydroplaning occurs when the condition of the tire tread, tire inflation pressure, speed of the car, and water depth on the road are combined in such a way that the tire loses contact with the road. And how can you avoid the dangerous and hair-raising experience of hydroplaning into a wild skid? First of all, drive on tires that have an open, wide groove tread design that lets the water escape quickly and not build up in front of the tires. Low profile tires have more tread on the road surface and provide for safe and sure handling under nearly all road conditions. However, with more rubber on a wet road, the tire will more readily get up on top of the water. Some people think that if you let some air out of your tires, you'll get better traction on wet pavement. Actually, it's just the opposite. If you use maximum recommended tire pressure, a car isn't as likely to hydroplane at lower speeds. For example, with only 16 pounds of pressure, your tires could hydroplane at about 41 miles per hour. With 24 pounds of pressure, the hydroplaning speed is increased to over 50 miles per hour. With 32 pounds of pressure, under the same conditions, your tires wouldn't hydroplane until you were traveling over 58 miles per hour. So, use maximum recommended inflation for safer driving on wet pavement. Also, try to match your tires so that those with similar tread groove depth are on the same axle. If you do hydroplane, you may as well do it straight ahead. The most important rule to follow in driving under any reduced traction situation is to reduce your speed to fit the road conditions so you can control your vehicle during all driving maneuvers. Consider that the entire stopping and turning control of several thousand pounds is dependent on only four contact areas with the road, each about the size of a man's hand. The faster you drive, the less traction and control you have. Be a smooth driver. Try to maintain an even speed and steady path of travel. Any increase or decrease in speed or any change in direction may well result in a skid. The more abruptly you make any of these changes, the more likely you are to skid. If the steering wheel begins to feel loose or your tires make a slushing sound, your tires are starting to hydroplane. This is the time to gradually let up on the accelerator and stay away from the brakes. Watch for standing water or puddles, especially on curves. When you see patches of water, or the water is deep enough to cover the unevenness of the pavement, assume that there's enough for hydroplaning. Drive toward the center of the road, where it is normally higher and the water not as deep. This also keeps you away from the shoulders that are often soft and muddy. Deep water should be avoided if possible. If you must cross a deep area, drive at a slow, steady speed to avoid water pile up in front of the vehicle, which could drown out your ignition. Apply gentle and steady brake pressure with the left foot to help prevent the brakes from getting wet. When you are out of the deep water, check your brakes. If they need drying, depress the brakes gently for a few seconds with your left foot while accelerating. Tire wipes are the tracks left on wet pavement by a vehicle in front of you. 
Drive in these tire wipes, and you'll have a drier surface and better traction. In all cases of reduced traction, allow a greater space cushion between your car and other vehicles, both to the side and front. Remember our stopping demonstration? Even the car with new radial tires took almost twice as much stopping distance on wet pavement as on dry pavement. Passing is one of the most critical maneuvers we make, even when road conditions are ideal. When you have reduced traction, allow a greater than normal space between you and oncoming traffic. And above all, be patient. Wait until road and traffic conditions will allow you to pass safely. Remember, when you start through an intersection or enter a roadway, you need more time to make the move. Whatever the cause of reduced traction might be, all drivers sooner or later experience a loss of traction and skidding action of their car. If your car does begin to skid, remember to steer in the direction that you want the front of the car to go. To straighten the car, when the rear of the car slides left, turn the steering wheel left. If the rear fishtails right in overcorrecting, to straighten the car, turn the steering wheel right. For the safest stop on a reduced traction surface, keep a firm grip on the steering wheel and gently pump the brakes in rapid succession. Make steering corrections when you let up on the brake. Whenever you're on any roadway during conditions of reduced traction, throw out the anchor and reduce your speed. Increase the amount of space cushion between you and other traffic. Do everything gently. Remember, all of the other drivers on the road are also trying to keep control of their cars under slippery conditions. The loss of control by one driver can affect the safety of many others. So, knowing the condition of your tires, learning to judge road conditions, and controlling your speed can keep you from the potentially dangerous practice of water skiing on four wheels. Thank you.